Hello. In this quick tip, we're going to be talking about the two different glass types that come with Keyshot. Now, when you've gone through and been changing material types using your drop down list here, you probably notice that there's a glass material and there's also a solid glass material. And both of them have slightly different properties, and you might not have known what the difference is between the two of them, but hopefully, this quick tip will help shed some light on that for you. Now, before we get into the specifics of each one of those material types, there's one thing you should probably understand about physics, and that is the property of refraction. And what refraction is, is it refers to how much light is bent and distorted as it passes through an object. So what I mean by that is when light is traveling through air and then it enters this glass material here, it's actually slowed down. So the light surrounding these vases and all these glass objects is moving faster than the light that's actually passing through them. So when the light that's passing through them finally makes it to your eye, it returns a distorted image and an image that's different than the light that's actually moving about freely through the air. Now different materials bend and refract light more than others and Keyshot does give you a method of controlling how much the light is bent. So let's look at the glass material first, and we'll take a look at what property allows you to control how much light is bent as it passes through your objects. That's going to be IOR, and that stands for Index of Refraction. Now every object in the real world, every material type, has a specific index of refraction. Glass happens to be 1.5, water is 1.3, and air happens to be 1. So let's go through those values and see what happens here. So currently we are set to 1.5, so we are simulating accurate glass here. If we start to increase this value, you should notice that the light is being refracted more. And if we set the value for water, which is 1.3, we're distorting light less now. And if I set the value for air, which is 1, we end up seeing no distortion. So all these values that you type in are actually physically accurate. Let's go ahead and go back to 1.5 for a value of glass. And let's look at this two-sided parameter. So go ahead and uncheck this value. And you can see what that's done here is it's no longer looking like realistic glass. So what we've done is we've turned off the refractions. Now for an item to refract in Keyshot, it needs two layers of polygons. So what I mean by that is if you look at this vase and the way it's constructed, it has a surface that runs along the outside, comes up around the top, comes back inside the vase, comes down to the bottom, and it actually gives this model thickness. So we're not dealing with just one layer of surfaces here. Now the refraction occurs in between these two surfaces. And that's how you actually simulate the refraction. So when I turn this on, that's where all the refraction is occurring. Now, the reason you might want to turn this off is if you don't have two surfaces to actually refract the light, as is the case with the vase on the end. So if you look at this sphere and this vase, you should notice that they're refracting and distorting light quite a bit more than the sphere and the vase down on this end. What we have here is something that's simulating sort of like a crystal ball, you know, a solid piece of glass. Whereas on this end, we're simulating something that's more like a bubble, you know, something that's hollow on the inside and has just a little bit of surface thickness to it. And same with this vase. Since it doesn't have the actual surface thickness, what it's doing is it's calculating the refraction in between the surface on one side and all the way on the other side as it passes through. So what we're simulating here is solid glass. So if you turn that off, what you end up doing is turning off the refractions between those two surfaces so you don't get something that's overly refractive. Now, one example I've definitely seen this in is a lot of times in, in models of cars, the windows in the car don't actually have surface thickness. And so if you have two-sided checked when you're creating windshields, 
you're going to end up making the whole interior of the car feel like it's enclosed in solid glass or filled with water. And everything's going to be way too refractive and it's not going to look right. So this two-sided option uh, gives you a way to reduce that, that look. Of course, you could always turn your index of refraction down and do it that way. And what it's going to come down to is what ends up looking better for you. More than likely, it will be uh, turning off two-sided. Because also what you can do if you have two-sided off, as you turn up this IOR, you will get a more reflective look on your glass. So that's another thing that you can use two-sided for as well. If you are trying to create something that's more reflective, you can turn off two-sided and increase your IOR. Because notice once I turn it on, we get something that's way, way too refractive. Okay, let's take a look at the solid glass. So I'll double click on this material type. And the interesting thing about the solid glass, and this specific solid glass, is that it's the same color as the vase to the left and to the right. So why does it look so different? Uh, the IOR is the same, it's 1.5 for glass. But the next item in the list is gonna be this transparency slider. You can almost think of this as color density. Okay. The solid glass is going to simulate a more physically accurate, more realistic glass than just the standard glass material. And the way it does that is by this transparency slider. As we start to decrease this value, you'll see more of this color come through. But you'll notice it comes through in the thicker areas of the glass more so than the thinner areas. So when you do have a thicker glass, you will notice more color density which you would actually have in real life. So, but in some cases it may come down to a matter of personal preference. Uh, you might want a solid even color across your glass material and that's uh, when you would go with the glass type. Okay, the other thing you can do with the solid glass is you have the ability to add roughness to it. So if you didn't want a perfectly polished, smooth outer edge, you could turn up this roughness slider. In this particular case, you notice as I move it, it's not having an effect, and that's because I need to turn on glossy. So once that's turned on, that's going to roughen up the outer edges of this solid glass. So again, this is another property that you're not going to have with just the standard glass material. So if you are looking to create something like this effect, you'll probably want to go with a solid glass. Now, the glossy samples, while we're in here, uh, this is going to control the accuracy of that rendered rough material. So if you turn this up, you should get a smoother result, a little bit faster. But it does take a hit on performance, so you'll want to watch how much you actually increase this. Usually you shouldn't need a value much above uh, 16 or 32. Alright, so that's a look at the two different glass types available inside Keyshot.